Joining me now to discuss the tragedy unfolding in Turkey and the possible political fallout is Joshua Walker. He's a fellow at the Truman National Security Project. He also has experience at the U.S. State Department and was a transatlantic fellow responsible for the Turkey program at the German Marshall Fund. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is now the highest worker loss ever in Turkey's history. How will the Turkish government cope with this and what sort of consequences do you think we'll see? I mean, I think as you, we just saw the reporting, it's going to get worse. This is the worst ever, 274 now. There's still a lot more unaccounted. This is a terrible tragedy, and it happens at a particular moment in Turkey in which everything is very fragile. Everything is very polarized. Everything is very political. There were local elections a couple of months ago. There's another set of elections coming up in the next couple of months. This is a time in which people should be coming together. Unfortunately, I think this tragedy is going to continue to drive people further apart, and it's a tragedy all around. I think it's going to affect the Turkish government in a lot of different ways. I think depending Depending on how this plays out in terms of the investigation of what went wrong, uh, the bottom line was this, this particular plant was privatized recently and a lot of the safety standards may or may not have been up to snuff. The question is, as they were cutting costs to make this mine more profitable, were there, were there corners that were cut? And I think that the anger and the grief that you see coming out of the Turkish population will continue to be directed at the government depending on how things come out of this. So what steps need to happen to proceed to where maybe some of the pressure is taken off? Um, we were talking with Mahal a few minutes ago about uh, Prime Minister Erdogan's response to this. Not taken very well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it started out well in the sense that he canceled his foreign visit and immediately went to the mine, was trying to be the kind of the, the commander in grief in many ways, um, but it was not very well received. Even though three days of mourning were, were expected, he was, you know, kind of afterwards, he seemed to be making light of the situation and didn't seem to kind of appreciate appreciate how significant this was, uh, and I think in many ways uh, reflects the mood of the time, which is that his base continues to be very much with him and will continue to blame the opposition for this. The opposition will continue to blame the government and, and Prime Minister Erdogan. I think to move forward from here, you have to really reach out. You have to be able to come to both sides and say, let's put politics aside. This is a national tragedy. Every life that was lost it is a tragic loss that should not have been lost. Let's make sure that never happens again. How can we prevent that? And right now, uh, there's more finger pointing going on than looking towards that future. Certainly this could be a turning point. I think he even mentioned that in his address uh, for people not to jump to conclusions. I want to ask you about the labor conditions uh, in Turkey. Is that something that's been high on the agenda for the government and for regulators to look at, or is it something that they've been struggling to improve? You know, I don't think Turkey is unique in the sense of having a very fast-growing economy. And so many, many times when the economy is growing very quickly, uh, labor standards tend not to be the very forefront. The idea is kind of increasing the middle class, and Turkey's had great success of that. From 2002 to now, looking at the number of people living under a certain threshold of poverty has been exponentially uh, growing, and the Gini coefficient, all these economic variables are very positive. I don't think that the labor uh, regulations and, and conditions were at the top of the agenda. They certainly will be now. And the question is, could there have, could something have happened beforehand? Could the government have done something to prevent this tragedy? And depending on what the special report finds, uh, a lot of the reports that were coming out before in terms of investigations were paid for by the private mining company, meaning that there was a conflict of interest. And so the question is, if that needs to change moving forward, what can the government do to make sure this never happens again? Because there were reports that this mine went through some, some checks recently, and, and it all looked okay. There were no issues. Uh, the safety standards at the time, according to these reports, seemed fine. Yeah, I think it's still too early to tell exactly what went wrong, but clearly something went horribly wrong. And even the numbers we're talking about, the fact you had two different shifts at the same time in the mine, there were so many things here that uh, probably could have been done. The question is, uh, were they done? Were they properly, you know, kind of vetted? Were the investigation? And the prime minister and every leader is saying, we're going to get to the bottom of this. The question is, will they get to the bottom of it to the satisfaction of their opponents? And will the opponents be willing to listen, even if the investigation comes up with other uh, other variables. Still a story that is uh, continuing to unfold. Joshua Walker, thank you so much for your perspective. Thank you for having me.